Hello, my fishy friends. We're going on a trip today. And we're going to put together a food web aquarium. So this will be real exciting stuff. Here's Frank. He's out there right now poking around in the water trying to see what he can see. We are just north of Fort Myers alongside the road. Water level is down, but there are plants here and one or two birds down there, so chances are we'll get some fish. We're here mainly to collect mud, plants, and uh, sand that we can use to set up this tank. I'm hoping we'll find some leaf litter along the way as well. That'll be real helpful. So, Frank uses a toss and drag the opposite of the way I met. Hermosa and mollies. So fairly common stuff. Once again, father fish in his natural environment. Little, little, that's little flag or no, that's a killer. No, it's a, it's the least killer. Yeah, the least killer. Right. Let's see if we can keep him. Is Bring he in my your hand? Yeah, okay. no. That was that's, the yeah, one. Yeah, that's probably him. Loose shrimping. Anything in there? A large gambozi. Oh, no, we don't want them. That is a, that is a good sight, isn't it? Yeah. Gambozi. Yep. Yeah. A lot of shrimp. What we're doing is we're going to set up this 15 gallon tank as a natural tank. Now, we had a little video in front of this showing us collecting dirt and sand and plants and water. Uh, I've got a few additives to go with it. So we're going to put this together. It's going to be very simple, very straightforward. Not going to be complicated, not going to be difficult. Um, let's get started. First of all, Craig, you want to hold this up and I'll take out of it. Let me show them what it is. It's muck and right muck and, and some humids, humic substance, which is rotted leaf matter and rotted plant matter. So we're going to start by putting. Now this is a thick, viscous mud. When you use this, you want to use it sparingly, and you want to add to it. Okay, so that's about all I want of that. Put that down and hand me the black. That's right. This I'm is, sure. the, yeah, this is, this is humic, it's humic charcoal that, um, that, that will, is going to help to, um, to aerate this. And then what I'm going to add to it is uh, an active soil. This is called active soil. This is actually one of the commercial products that's sold in the industry by Shrimp King. So we'll add some of this. And then I've got one more additive. Let me get a little more of it. Okay. 
Now, I've not used this before, but I kind of like what it looks like. Now, this is my additive. This is a dozen different ingredients that are going to go in with this. And once I get it all in, we'll level it out. I'm not going to try to mix it a whole lot because I'm going to cap this whole thing with sand. So what I want to do at this point is level it. Okay, now what we have done here is we have recreated a pond bottom, the substrate of a pond. We've added some material to it to loosen it up a little bit so it won't be quite as dense. We're going to, and then we've added some long-term material to, to allow it to last long-term. Let's put a little of, the, little of that in now. This is some, some humid material that we collected. Uh, it's plant matter primarily. We'll just add a little of this on top, and then we're going to cap the whole thing, and then we'll put a little more of that in now after we put the okay, sand, sand in. So let's... Let's go with the sand. And we're going to put about an inch and a half of this. This is a very fine, very fine, like a sugar sand. It's the kind of sand that's found in ponds and creeks and rivers and so forth. It's not a thick, heavy sand. It's a very thin, fine sand. So we don't need nearly as much, but I'm going to get pretty close to two inches because I don't want this stuff leaching out. Now it's kind of damp, so it's going in sort of clumpy. How are we doing? Uh, inch and a half probably in the middle and on the left hand side. Okay, we can do a little more. Just We're not going to we're not going to worry about having too much. Really can't have too much. But we do want to make sure we have enough. We collected the water. This is wild water. The importance of wild water cannot be overstated. Wild water contains all of the elements that are needed in order to maintain stability. So whenever possible, you want to use wild water. I just shipped fish in wild water. They were a week in the bag in shipping, and they survived perfectly. Now, do you notice how clear this water is? That sand is holding all the dirt in. It's not really releasing at all. Uh, the water is pretty humid, so it's already got uh, a, brown, a lot of brown in it. Humic, a humic substance is humus, is nutrition. It's, it's nutrition for microscopic life. So when it disappears, it disappears because it has been consumed by the microscopic life in the tank. It is very tiny particulate matter uh, from, from leaves and other uh, rotting vegetation. Now we're getting there. We're not halfway yet. How much water we got left? Lots. Good. I need lots. This is a 15 gallon tall, really sweet tank. Uh, I think it's one we're going to have a lot of fun with. Now we're setting it up outdoors because we're putting outdoor plants, native plants, and native fish in it. So it's going to stay out here. I don't know how long because I don't know how long I'm going to be living here or whether my landlady is going to, uh, how she's going to feel about it being here. But we'll see. If we have to move it, we'll move it. Okay. We got plenty of water here. Give me the bucket with the plants, and I'll start putting plants in here. I got a couple of pieces of driftwood. We'll put them in. A little hardscape. 
Um, hold on first. Another five gallons would be plenty. Okay. Got now, what we got here is uh, we got a bunch of Ludwig here. There's a long stem. We don't need the long stem. These are plants growing. I'm kind of long as stems, but I think they'll look good. Let's just get them in here. This sand is very soft. And there. Here, I'll tell you what, bring the fish over. We'll put the fish in and then we'll add water to it. Hard, hard, let it go. Not gonna do it. Yep, got them all. I think so. So we've got shrimp, mollies, frontosa, um, formosa. formosa, not frontosa, <laughs> formosa, uh, golden top minnow, uh, one or two alisoma. Flagfish, about five or six different species. Um, I didn't put the flags in yet. Okay. So let me do this. Let me bring the camera over. And we can get a closer look at this because it's, it's really kind of pretty. Let's see. Reverse the camera. It'll settle. Yeah, it'll settle. Okay, so you can see what we've done, how simple we've done it. Putting that right now. Alrighty. So, a father fish special. <laughs> this is a native tank. A native tank made with native materials. There's one more thing I want to do. I have, where's that bucket? Hand me that little pail. And we'll put a little bit of that humus in here. All right, a little bit of this. A little bit of humus. It's basically dead plant matter that is going to, uh, it'll have a lot of microfauna in it, which the little fish are going to... Um, are going to need for food. So there we are. Tomorrow morning, this will be crystal clear. I'll come back and try to do another shot in the morning. You see some of the fish. It's it's bubbling up. It's simply releasing air from the substrate. I did not soak the substrate, which is something I always recommend doing. And this is why, but it's not creating a problem. So not going to worry about it. I think it probably was the uh, the charcoal that because that was light with a lot of air in it. So that's probably where this air is really coming from. All right, there we go. There's some flags going on. Wonderful. Well, here we are. This is the 15 gallon dirted food web aquarium the next morning As you can see it's cleared up pretty nicely and there are fish swimming around there's the shrimp over there you see the shrimp and there's a fish in the back i just had my hands in there so they're kind of scared here we go they're coming out a little bit. That's a Florida we got 15, flag. 20 fish in here. <clears throat> looking pretty good. Plants are looking nice. So. It has tannins in it, which is good. Because that's going to promote microfauna which many of these little guys in here will be looking for as food. So there we have it. That's a great shot. I love it. Okay. Good. We are on Curry Creek. You've seen pictures of this before. Uh, it's a very long creek, about 10 miles or longer. Um, and it goes out to uh, Venice Bay. 
and we've caught some uh, pretty nice fish in here too. Uh, some uh, um, uh, pupfish, killies. I caught a big seven pound bass. A lot of fish out of here. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Uh, this is part of a bigger project that um, we're very excited about. So please pass along the link. And let's get lots of people sharing this. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Well, there we have it. Now you can do this. This is a very simple, simple setup. Simply done. You do it with a little mud, a little dirt, a little sand, a little bit of plants, and some water. Try, if you can, to bring wild water in. Wild water contains all of the elements of life that your tank needs to be able to support the plants and fish and other critters living in it. We have a, we're going to be focusing on this web, uh, food web motif for the next few weeks. I really want to be able to drive it home because it is the key to be able to maintain a balanced aquarium that really is a natural aquarium that provides the very food that your small fish need in order to survive. So bless you all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Um, we're just three or four days before Christmas here. Happy to be with you. Come back. Be a part of us. Join Discord. Discord will give you all of the conversation you could ever possibly want about maintaining a balanced aquarium with a deep substrate. Thanks again and bye-bye. Bye for now.